When the heart doesn't beat the way it should, defibrillators can send a jolt of electricity that can help restore a normal heartbeat. There are risks from implanted devices, which has scientists working on wireless devices. Here to discuss the topic, Dr. Jeff Curlin, a cardiologist with the Memphis Heart Clinic who practices at Baptist DeSoto. And Dr. Welcome to Smart Medicine's Heart of the Matter. How do these wireless defibrillators work? The wireless defibrillators are really an incredible new technology with device therapy, specifically as it regards to heart rhythm management. Uh, the devices have really become pretty commonplace within the past three to four years and they have the unique ability to allow us to communicate with devices without requiring any real true contact in terms of a hand or even a direct piece of equipment with the patient. Uh, wirelessly we're able to talk to these devices because they have uh, equipment within them <coughs> that allows us to communicate remotely to those devices and provide really just an incredible amount of information. How are they better than older monitors? They're better than older models in a number of, uh, a number of features. Primarily, they're able to provide a lot more clinical information for patient care that we used to never get before. Uh, the original devices that came out were able to communicate through a telephone line and would provide some very rudimentary data for us in terms of just the overall basic battery life of a device. But now with the device therapy that we get, the information really provides us an incredible amount of <clears throat> management in terms of the volume status of a patient, not just, all, not just in terms of their heart rhythm, uh, but their overall well-being and their overall clinical status. What kind of patients benefit from this technology? Patients, uh, really all patients, frankly, benefit from this data. Any patient who's going to end up needing some sort of device to help regulate their heart rhythm is going to benefit from this type of therapy and treatment. Uh, in particular, the patients who have really truly benefited have been patients who have had congestive heart failure. Uh, it has provided so much more information that has allowed us to try to manage these patients in an outpatient setting and hopefully try to avoid recurrent hospitalization, which is a big problem for patients with congestive heart failure. Is it widely available? The technology is becoming increasingly available, and in fact, I would say it's going to be standard at some point fairly soon, probably within the next few years. Uh, it has come a long way, just to give you a spectrum, when I finished my fellowship in 2005, there was only one company at that time that was offering wireless technology. All three companies that we principally use now offer wireless technology, principally as it relates to defibrillator therapy, and we're now also seeing that added into pacemaker therapy. So I think you're going to see this ultimately become widespread and, and become the norm rather than something unusual or unique. How do you see this technology evolving in the future? I think the technology, uh, it has evolved, first of all, tremendously just within the past three to four years. So, I mean, it's almost been a logarithmic uh, expansion in terms of the use of these devices. In terms of the next steps and what's going to happen in the future, I think first and foremost is the idea of these devices becoming MRI compatible. That's been a big limitation and an issue for us in the past. And it's probably one of the most common questions I get whenever I implant one of these devices in my own patient is what are my restrictions? And so the idea of these devices becoming compatible with MRI imaging is going to be something we're going to see in the future. In terms of the information that we get, again, as I kind of alluded to earlier, in addition to simply treating the heart rhythm, which is something that we focus on with these devices, I think it's going to increasingly tell us a lot more clinical variables that we have not otherwise been able to achieve specifically as it relates to blood pressure, uh, to their overall day-to-day -day weight uh, in terms of managing their volume status. And it may even be able to go on at some point and tell us what blood sugars are. It might be able to tell us really just an incredible amount of new information that will allow us to manage a patient. Uh, and again, the whole idea is to optimize outpatient care. And that's what these devices will do. Dr. Jeff Curlin, thank you for joining us today on Smart Medicine's Heart of the Matter.